CFUs come from everywhere. So the fact that we've now got rooms under negative pressure, we never had to worry about this before under USP 797. We were just basically blowing all the positive air out, right? We never had to worry about pulling air from an unsealed ceiling tile into an interstitial space. So you got to understand that CFUs come from everywhere and we need to consider the door locations. So let's jump over to the graphic. This is design A and this is design B. So this is what they started with and this is what it ended with. So imagine you've got a technician coming into an from an unclassified area and they're going to do their initial PPE, put on their hair bouffant, their mask, step over the line of demarcation with their shoe booties, but now they are still unguarded because the hand hygiene sink is on the clean side of the demarcation. So they're walking unguarded by a negative pressure door. Now it's very likely that negative pressure door is not wide open like it is in the drawing, but the reality is it's still not a best practice to have unguarded technicians walking by a negative pressure door to get to a hand hygiene sink. So the question is, what is the solution? We jump next over to the design. Basically, we just flip flop the sink and the door. It was an easy settle, right? Flip flop the sink and the door. So now when the technician comes in, they do their initial PPE, they step over the line of demarcation, they do hand hygiene, they finish their garbing here, and now they can move on into either space without having to pass by a negative pressure door. So if you're currently working with an architect or a design firm or a modular wall company, whoever you're working with, think through the process. This is part of that workflow understanding. What am I carrying? Am I carrying totes? How am I doing my PPE? Is my hand hygiene sink on the clean side, the dirty side, or wherever it's at? How am I moving people in process and where are my doors? So again, just kind of step, step away from it and think about it. You also want to caulk and clamp those ceiling tiles and caulk the ceiling grid to the wall. So imagine that 0.01 to 0.03 negative pressure. Again, it's not a significant negative pressure, but it is enough negative pressure that if your ceiling grid is not caught to the wall, it's very likely you could be pulling that dirty air from above the ceiling down into your ISO rated clean room. So we wanna caulk the perimeter of the grid to the wall, and we want to make sure that all the ceiling grids are clamped from above or caught from the low. Now, there is a couple of states out there that they absolutely want to see the caulking. Let me just jump over to the model real fast. I want to show you this as part of the design criteria, just kind of bring light to that. So where the ceiling grid matches the wall, you want to make sure that there's caulking there, right? Super important that that, because that is a space. Now, we're essentially trying to create a submarine hatch, and we can't always do that. I'm sorry. That a little bit faster and then we want to make sure that we're clamping from above right what we're trying to do is get good natural compression to the ceiling grid so that none of that dirty air gets pulled into my iso rated air uh, areas i'm also wanting to foam fill my electrical boxes if you're stick framing it if you're doing a modular wall system then you don't have to worry about that and then you want to consider airlocks between certain rooms and the next slide i'm going to show you how to integrate an airlock that is actually mentioned in USP 797, not mentioned in 800, but certainly very much applicable so that we don't move lesser quality air into higher quality air uh, rooms. And then consider a vapor barrier if we're gonna stick frame that. And I should have left the model up so that I can show you that real fast. Now, when we talk about a vapor barrier, that is actually gonna go on top of the gypsum. I'm sorry, let me move back over here. So if I'm stick framing this, again, this is not modular. I'm gonna have my metal studs, my gypsum wall, but I'm gonna put up a poly vapor barrier first. Now, when we talk about vapor barriers, we're not talking about Tyvek house wrap with a perm rating of 56. We're actually talking about like an eight mil poly. And the reason why is we wanna make sure that none of that outside vapor, none of that outside heat is coming into that space. Remember what I told you earlier, that a clean room is a virtual sponge for all things vapor related. Now, here is your other best practice, which is an absolute in my mind. If this wall right here is the exterior of the building, you do not want to do a clean room, or if you do, you wanna build a wall within a wall. So here's the point. Utilizing the building's exterior wall as part of your clean room is setting yourselves up for CFUs. You're not gonna get ahead of your surface sampling, Your uh, all the sampling you got to do as part of your environmental monitoring program. If you use a building exterior wall as part of your clean room, you're gonna set yourself up for problems because you do not know if the wall has a vapor barrier. 
if it's insulated, you have no idea. So you want to build a wall within a wall, which is one of the benefits of actually going modular because that does essentially create walls within walls.